Okay. Uh, Professor Avni Meller, he, he, he uh, presented the activity of a collage board from his uh, critical, critical way. Critics is, is a good thing. To have a, a, a critic position is always a good thing, uh, especially, especially in environmental matters. I think it's a good thing. But I'm uh, yesterday welcome uh, welcome to the guests from uh, overseas, and uh, I think the organization of that such a workshop on agriculture utilization of coal ash. But in my mind, it's also uh, all the workshops organized in Israel with guests from uh, other countries. I think that Israel is a uh, one of the countries which success to have in the past, like it was, it was uh, recalled before that in the past we had a uh, disposal in the sea. So it's uh, 15 years ago, it's a long, long time ago, but we had to get from a uh, situation from partial utilization in the building industry when I, be, uh, uh, I have to recall, I began to work in the Israeli Electric Company in 1991. And at this time, uh, 60, between 60 and 70 percent of the coal ash was used for, uh, by nature, by the cement factories, and the other part was disposed into the sea. It's a reason why we had to get permits. I was personally involved to get permits to dispose the coal ash in the sea, and we had also a mo monitoring plan there to see effects on the uh, mar marine uh, ground. Okay, but now uh, my position is a, is a position of the producer, yes, yeah, to produce the coal ash. Uh, my viewpoint can be different from the regulator's point of uh, 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 utilizing the consumer of ash, he will see it from another po point of view. But uh, one of the reasons of the success for using for full utilization of all the ash we produce is to get a good chemical characterization. The chemical characterization is the key point because it's the identity card of this byproduct. Yes, it's, it's not a waste, it's a uh, combustion byproduct. And if we, we sell it everywhere, we sell the coal ash, so it's a commodity. Yet, yet I think the public has to understand that it's not, it's not a waste, it's a commodity, a resource for the industry, and we have to treat and to manage it like Omri Lola does it. We have to treat it like a resource. And also from now everyone speak on uh, sustainability. Part of the sustainable development is to use byproducts maximum amounts you can. So now I have to, from the point of view of the producer, agriculture utilization, it's rather marginal. Yes, in, uh, we produce uh, one more than one million ton of coal ash uh, every year, and uh, the part used for agriculture it can be uh, uh, forty between between twenty and thirty thousand tons, uh, mainly bottom ash. Uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, fifty thousand uh, ton. Part of it, uh, half of it is, is bottom ash and half of it is, is fly ash. And also, the, uh, these are two different kinds of utilization. Uh, I think it will, the, the other speakers will deal with it in this afternoon, but we, we have to, there is a difference. For bottom ash, we have relatively a few utilization possibilities. And the utilization in agriculture as a growth thing, growth uh, to grow plants, it's very, it's a fine, very fine way. After sieving, after separating the, the particle size, you can use it, and it's very valuable. For fly ash, we use it for enviro, 
at, and it's a, in fact, you have to remember that it's a kind of uh, open application. Say so you spread the ash on the field, and you have to be aware that you have to have good condition to do it. It's different from building application where the fly ash is enclosed. So here you can see the uh, amount of coal uh, important, production of coal ash and the use. As I said, from, for 15 years we have full utilization. And for the, uh, the last years, the building industries is uh, utilizing more than 90% of the coal ash. Now to understand the uh, chemical properties of coal, of coal ash, you have to see this piece picture. During the combustion in the boiler, the coal is, is uh, burned at very high temperature, uh, 1,500 degrees. And for this reason, you get, uh, after that, the uh, 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 there is solidification of, of this aluminosilicate of the ash very quickly. And you get an amorphous, an amorphous uh, material. Uh, there is a more than 70% glass in the fly ash. And this is the same uh, scanning e electron micrograph of fly ash. You can see that there are very regular, regular round balls which characterize the ash. <coughs> now the coal ash chemistry and mineralogy. Uh, first of all, I have to precise that we use only imported coal. It's important because the quality of the coal ash, it depends on the kind of coal you buy, you, you burn. So uh, we have relatively uh, homogeneous uh, coal. We came from several countries, but we have specification for this coal as it's only bituminous coal international trade coal with uh, very low sulfur content and uh, bituminous coal, you get, in fact, only uh, alkaline coal ash, basic coal ash in our case. And it will see for agriculture applications, uh, an open up is very important because we have IPH. So all the two elements, they can be released into the environment that not and soluble. So uh, the first of all, in the coal ash, you have the matrix, the uh, aluminum silicate matrix, which is you put it in the environment, but it's, it doesn't release anything. It's aluminum silicate. You have a uh, pH of the fly ash suppression is between 9 and 13. As I said, it's alkaline ash, and ash components and contaminants are mainly insoluble in water. The mineralogical fraction is a glass 75%, aluminum silicate phase, uh, crystalline moulite and quartz 20%, and iron phase 5%. Uh, 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 the main, main constituents of coal ash. Uh, you can see in this table the composition of the coal ash uh, as, uh, in function of the origin of the coal. You have all the uh, countries from which we bring coal, and you have the range of uh, oxide, metal oxide in, and you can see that the, fir the three first components uh, si silicon oxide, aluminum oxide, and iron oxide, they constitute more than 90% of the fly ash. So it's an aluminum silicate. A very important component of the ash is the calcium oxide because it gives its uh, uh, properties uh, of uh, uh, cementitious <coughs> properties for utilization like uh, sewage sludge stabilization, 
or clay soil stabilization, it's good to have uh, as high as possible calcium content. And you can see over small the other part, you can see that in 2013, the uh, South African uh, coal ash was 40%, from Colombia 30%, and from Russia 20%. It depends on the ash content in the coal. Colombian coal has a lower ash content than South African coal. The classification of coal ash, first of all, from as a community for the point of view of the building industry is a pozzolanic class F ply ash according to a estimate classification. So it's good to use it as a cementation pozzolanic material. And you have, as I said before, high calcium oxide content and lower. For Envio, we'll prefer this kind of ash. Uh, also very important is the, con the content of unburnt carbon content. The utilization, uh, the standards for utilizing fly ash in the building industry, it uh, they, they are, there are standards which limits the amount of unburnt carbon content. And if the unburnt carbon content is higher than 6 or 7%, you cannot use it in the building industry. So each truck which going uh, outside of the power plant, you have to check the, car the LOI content. OK, now from we said that the matrix, aluminum silicate matrix, is relatively inert. It doesn't have any effect on the environment. What is important, it is the trace elements which are uh, contained, absorbed on the aluminum silicate matrix inside this glass ball or on the surface of them. them. So you can see it, the uh, results from the follow-up on the content of trace elements, not <coughs> all I I introduce in the table only we have, according to the regulation, we have to check 17 trace elements. But here, I put the most toxic elements. Now, the green, in the green part of the table, this is cations. It's heavy metals. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, arsen is not, but mainly the heavy metals, which are the most toxic. This one, that's much less toxic. In fact, they are not toxic or only phytotoxic, not toxic to humans. But what we checked when we start to characterize the environmental uh, status of coal ash, we focused on the anions, oxy anions, because they are more <coughs> released from an alkaline ash. In a, when you put it in contact with water, they are more uh, re released more easily. So we focused on these elements. And we'll see in all the regions from our leachates that we are relatively higher amounts of oxyanions in the leachates. These results, these are for semi-annual ash samples. But we also determined twice elements for fly ash we, re we produce for each supplier of coal. Now you can see it now uh, when <coughs> you uh, uh, check the quality of your ash for the point of view of trace elements. You have to, uh, first of thing, you have to see what is the total contents of trace elements. And here you can compare the range of, uh, of trace element content in Israeli fry ash in comparison with soil, unpolluted soil and with sewage sludge. You can see for that for all the elements, you have, we have similar amounts. So it, it can, it's OK to put fly ash in salt, because you don't enrich the salt in this stress element. 
a, very, a different case, for example, is boron. And because you can see that, it's what is considered with, uh, there is a slightly high, higher content of boron in fly ash than in soil. <coughs> Now you can see in the previous table with the ranges, and you can hear the, the average or the median. So once again, you can see that they are similar. You have bor boron. You can see there is an order of magnetum higher in fly ash than in soil. And uh, selenium, uh, especially from uh, coal, which originally from Colombia, you have, you can, relatively higher content, but once again, uh, it's not saline, it's not very toxic to humans. Now, uh, very important is to compare the quality of the fly ash you produce in comparison with Europe. Uh, all the regulations in Israel, they are based on European directives. So, uh, if in these countries, in the, of the European Union, European countries, uh, all the, the amounts of coal ash are allowed, they are considered as byproducts, and they are used in all kinds of applications, <coughs> including open applications. So uh, if it's the same kind of quality, it's a similar case. So you can see that here with this paper from 205, that in Israeli ash, you have similar contents of twice element. So we have the same under the European regulation. All the ash is uh, good to use. Barshimush, Efer Barshimush. Now, the other side of twice element characterization is to characterize the, tra the twice elements in lichates. You We use two kinds of lichates. The EPA, the old uh, EPA method leaching test, TCLP, and you have criteria to, uh, from, in, in, from Israeli Minister of, of Environment to, uh, it's, it's a border for hazardous materials, hazardous waste. You can see then for all the period we checked, you can see for all the toxic elements, the elem uh, you have all the range is lower than the criterion, so all the ash is good to use Barshimush. Now, you, uh, I, uh, I get very quickly on this test. The uh, TCLP test is at pH 5, it's an acidic. The, now it's preferable to use a uh, neutral, neutral uh, extract to use uh, distilled water, like in the uh, EN test. And now you have comparison between uh, the, uh, the uh, results of analysis of uh, uh, fly ash from different countries, when the coal is from different countries, with a criteria for uh, characterizing hazardous waste in the U in according to the European directive. And you can see that for all the heavy metals, you are below. We have two elements, mol molybdenum and selenium, the oxy anions, that it's, border, it's on the border, it's very close to the criterion, but in fact, like in Europe, it doesn't, uh, uh, it, it, it's still possible to use in open applications. Uh, Omri Lulav, he asked me to present the radioactivity of a fly ash because in the past here in this country we have to, uh, we have a said decision by the Ministry of Environment that coal ash has to be considered as a radioactive waste. In fact, the, the, the reality, it's not, it's not, it cannot be considered as radioactive waste, but in the, uh, there is, in coal, like every geological, geological material, you have natural radioactive elements, radium and thorium, and 
Radium is from the chain of the uranium and uh, potassium-14. So it, when you, you burn the coal in the fly ash, you increase the concentration by 10, factor of 10 in the average. So you have what is called uh, norm, naturally occurring radioactive material, slightly enhanced material. So you have to follow up the content of radioactive elements. And from, for the 20 last year, we checked in the same samples, the uh, semi-annual sample, we check the content of radioactive elements. And here you can see our position in comparison with other countries. The world's average are from a non-scale report, updated scale report. You can see for uranium, uh, you have, you have uh, the same characteristic and thorium were slightly above the average. The reason is because we burn South, South African coal and South African coal is richer in thorium than the average world coal. But in, the, in this case, there is this question, is there any radiological risk from coal ash utilization? In five minutes, it's, la it's very <laughs> difficult to explain. But as I said, it's slightly enriched in radioactive element. Now, in, there is now in the international uh, convention from IAEA and VINA guidelines, there is a tweet also on uh, rad naturally radioactive materials and what is called bulk materials, materials that produce in very huge amounts. And there is, uh, uh, according the to the concentrations you, say, you see so in the previous table, Israeli fly ash is exempted from control in reporting. It's, in the, it's, it's a category of waste which does need, if, when you have judged concentration, you don't have to control for international transport. There are two, in, and more than that, now the uh, radioactive elements, radium, it, it increases gamma radiation, and uh, uh, it also increases exposure to radon. Radon is a gas, can, it's a gas which can be released by the coal ash, uh, for example, when it's introduced in concrete. So it's, and it got inside the respiratory system because it, this is external exposure and internal exposures. And in fact, when you see the, the glass balls, there were many experiments in uh, Costa and not here, but in the Professor Kobler in Technion, he, he checks fly ash uh, from the literature is known that in fact the release of radon from fly ash is even lower than release of radon from other building materials. For open application like agriculture, the radiologic is not significant in view of a small radioclid concentration and very low water solubility. Now, in the future, how can we uh, protect uh, uh, to maintain this situation, this win-win situation, what is was said before? We have to uh, keep the ash quality. And uh, um, I didn't, if I uh, recall, I predict the future, you have, I not if you are aware of it, but in fact, Flat, uh, coal ash production in Israel will decrease in the 10, 10 years from now because uh, Israel Electric use uh, natural gas more and more. Uh, in, in for, it should be 50-50, 50 50% coal and 50% natural gas. And another point is now we are installing flue gas gliding equipment in all in the two power stations also in Hadera, and it's a very big project. It's billion of dollar projects. And also to install this installation, you have to stop the unit, coal, coal firing unit. So in, because you stop for three, four months the, the, the units, so you decrease also the production of coal ash. 
So from for the three years from now, we'll have a so, uh, uh, 10% of 20% reduction of foliage production. What is predictive? And uh, but another side that one of these few pieces of equipment, it can add ammonia inside the fly ash, and we'll have to follow up to see that it won't. Uh, it, it can, it, the problem of ammonia, it is not toxic, but there is ammonia smell, and you have to be uh, to check the concentration of ammonia in the ash to use it in concrete and building projects. Also, alternative fuels. Now we are checking co-fine of biomass with coal ash also to check it doesn't affect the coal ash uh, quality. And uh, as I said, also to keep the quality of coal ash when we have these flue gas cleaning equipment. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>